Hello, everyone, and inside today's emergency Locked On Canadians, the Canadians and the Rocket are looking for a new head coach. Your Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very, very slightly panicked episode 1095 of Locked On Canadians. We are your daily Montreal Canadiens podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day of the week on Google, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, or on YouTube.com. And we are also brought to you by Ultimate Hockey GM today. If you've ever dreamed of being an NHL GM and managing your own hockey franchises, well, now you can with Ultimate Hockey GM it's completely free and locked on users get a hundred percent free boost to their franchise when using the promo code locked on NHL in the game store to download the game. Just visit hockeygm.app or look it up in the app stores, ultimate hockey GM, start your dynasty today. I am your host. I am Scott Matla and I am trying to wrap my head around a whole lot of things today. I'm actually working a half day at my regular job today, but this news came in and I dropped everything because this was something that we had to get to very quickly. Uh, it's been quiet in Montreal. There were a lot of AHL signings, and then all of a sudden, things kind of slowed down a little bit. The The big news of today is less than a full month after signing a three-year contract extension to remain as head coach of the Laval Rocket, uh, head coach Jean-Francois Houle has uh, mutually agreed to part ways with the Montreal Canadiens and the Laval Rocket, uh, for a new opportunity at Clarkson University. Uh, we'll get into the candidates and such uh, in our second segment there. This might just be, you know, one and a half segments of just kind of free-flowing consciousness on things because there's a lot to kind of process with this because it came out of nowhere. And the first question is, well, you know, why? Why would the Canadians and the Rocket agree to bring this coach back if he was going to up and leave, the biggest thing is he took a job at Clarkson University, his alma mater, where he played hockey uh, and a team who just lost their own head coach to Cornell University. And they were looking to bring things in so they can uh, kind of staunch that bleeding a little bit uh, in terms of losing potential players in the transfer portal and such and bringing in a guy who played there and has professional coaching experience, a lot of professional coaching experience now is a big deal. Uh, it's tough timing, but also I think what people might be missing in this is this Clarkson job did not exist when who uh, resigned with this organization. They went through the uh, press conference and the reintroductions and everything like that. This was not a job that existed out there at the time. It, it came up in the last week or so after uh, Clarkson's coach left to go to Cortland or not Cortland Cornell. Like I was saying, and I, they like very likely reached out and uh, Chris Peter said this on Twitter is that college hockey coaching jobs pay very well, likely very, very well compared to AHL coaching jobs. And I was having this discussion with some folks in the eyes on the prize Slack chat, as well as that it's not that the Montreal Canadians and the rocket could not afford to match what he is getting paid. There is probably more that leads into this that's kind of important in the press release from Clarkson it says you know Hul's son plays lacrosse at SUNY Potsdam which is in the nearby area there it allows him to be closer to his family and it also quite frankly is a lot less travel uh all for several months out of the year there because you look at when college hockey season starts and how in the window for that compared to the AHL season, which he's going to be starting his coaching duties, basically going into develop or would have been into development camp, a little bit of a break. Then you have rookie camp into the main training camp, or he would have been around for that into AHL training camp into the regular season, then potentially the playoffs and everything with that. It's a long time and it's a lot of time on buses too. It's a long, long time to be sitting on buses and to be away from your family as well. And like I said, he played hockey there, which is a big deal. That is someone for them to come in and he's been there. He's been as part of the program and he wants to help get them back to being a more prominent uh, 
face in the NCAA, I should say. And it's a tough pill to swallow because it is now, we are, as of the time I'm recording this, and when you were hearing this, it is Friday afternoon when I'm recording this, and you will hear this by Friday mid-afternoon. We are a week from the NHL draft. There are signings to be made, AHL like input to be made. And this is now two coaching positions that the Rocket need to fill now. They uh Kelly Buckberger went back to uh be closer with his family, which we knew they have to fill his role. He mostly worked with the defense, and now they need a head coach for the Laval Rocket heading into development camp season, the draft, and free agency, no less. They need input from people to hey. Who should we be bringing back into this AHL lineup and who you dealt with? It's that's a tough part because the other coaches also got extended with this. I believe Uh, it's, it's just the timing is tough and people are going to ask, well, what's, you know, Jean-Francois who was legacy with the Laval rocket. And I think that he did a very good job building on what Joel Bouchard had started. Joel Bouchard had kind of gotten, he took over this team and they were in a rough spot coming off their first few years under Sylvain Lafay, uh, where the prospect pool wasn't deep. And there were games that I talked to Bouchard and he went, I'm playing with call-ups and guys that are on tryout contracts. There's only so much I can do and uh, ask of them against one of the top teams in the league after certain games. And then in Bouchard's last full season, he really got them clicking and started this. And then Jean-Francois Hull came in. And he kept this team rolling, got them into the playoffs again, made a deep run Eastern Conference final, which is impressive. It was a team that was well-oiled. It was deep. They were playing for each other. It was an intensity. He had a good mix of vets and guys of coming. And then some of those veterans moved on. And the next year, there were some growing pains. New guys in the forward group, some new pieces on defense. Caden Primo was still there sneak into the playoffs at the end of the regular season there. Losing two games to a Utica team that was firing on all cylinders at the right time in a series where it was Caden Primo doing everything but the offense. Just looked tired from playing what it was essentially playoff hockey for two months trying to make up lost ground. And then coming into this year, this is the year where I think that people who are on the fence coming into the season, the Rockets started poorly. A lot of young guys, a lot of mistakes. And Jean-Francois Houle said it himself, give me until December and you'll see what this team is supposed to look like because guys need time to settle and to adjust. And then December rolled around, the calendar ticked over, and the Rocket were one of the best teams in the AHL. And then injuries and then just probably some fatigue down the stretch. They just barely missed the playoffs in the last few games of the season. It was tough. They were a good team, but they were inconsistent at places. But I think that he really was getting, he was getting down to where they needed to be as a team overall. Uh, It's going to be tough to replace him. There are some quality candidates out there, but I think the legacy for someone like Jean-Francois Houle here is that he came in, he had to follow a guy that a lot of people liked in this fan base. I was a big fan of Joel Bouchard. He was always very honest and upfront with me about a lot of things that he did a good job bouncing them out of what was a huge hole uh, in the AHL after almost what five or six years in just error after error by keeping Sylvain Lefebvre there in the Mark Bergevin era. It wasn't ideal. And Bouchard started and then Houle kind of got him to that next level. And I think that is a truly impressive thing. And now they need someone to continue that work. There's more prospects joining this team. You have Florian Jekai. You have guys like Sean Farrell and Riley Kidney who might need to take that next step. You have David Reinbacher. You might have Logan Mayugan. You're going to have Adam Engstrom. You're going to have uh, Jakob Dobish in year two. There's a lot of opportunity. It's an appealing job for someone because you're going to be in a very, you're going to get all the support in the world from the Montreal Canadiens here. And I think that there's a lot of people who should be potentially lining up for this job. We're going to discuss coming up next who I think some of the top candidates are and what I would hope to see out of that hire. And that's all coming up next. But first, as I said off the top of the show, today's show is brought to you by Hockey Ultimate GM. And if you, Locked On Canadians fans, think you can manage a team or franchise better than an NHL GM, 
Well, guess what? Your dream can come true. And this game is definitely for you because with hockey ultimate GM or ultimate hockey GM, you can manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the seasons, lead your team to glory, hire the right coaches and staff, trade players or draft picks, navigate free agency and the NHL draft all in a challenging and realistic game world. As a Habs fan, you know there's no offseason. We are constantly busy. GMs are constantly making moves at every point to improve the team's chances, and that's why I think you are going to love this game, and it's completely free and available to play offline. So play on the go whenever you want to, and Lockdown Network listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when they use the promo code Lockdown NHL in the game store. So make sure to check that out. To download the game, just visit hockeygm.app or look it up in the app stores. Ultimate Hockey GM, start your dynasty today. We are back here at Lockdown Canadians. This is a rocket-centric emergency episode. Uh, if you, for some reason, skipped the first segment, which, how dare you? I can't believe you've done this to me. Jean-Francois Houle and the Canadians have parted ways. We are a week from the draft, about a week and a half, two weeks from development camp. There is no AHL head coach. There's no AHL defensive coach right now. The biggest thing with this is, and I didn't want to hint at this too much in the first thing, because I wanted to kind of get all that info in here, is who are the top candidates then? Who can they reasonably hire to fit what this team is looking for? Because I think Jean-Francois Houle did a very good job working within the system that the Canadians had. Uh, and this comes from Anthony Marcotte, play-by-play voice of the Laval Rocket, someone who's a lot more plugged in with potential coaches that fit both a team and uh, franchise need in terms of development, but also the market they are in. They need someone who speaks French, a, a coach of Quebecois background. And I have to agree that I think the Canadians were very okay with this following the departure of Pascal Vincent from Columbus earlier this week or last week. Time is a flat circle and such that I think he is someone who is absolutely in the running for this job here. He's coached for a long, long time in the, uh, in the AHL before he's been a QMJHL head coach. He's been a Winnipeg jets assistant coach. He's been a Manitoba moose uh, head coach. He's been an assistant and then a head coach with Columbus as well. He's coached a lot of teams. Uh, he coached Cape Breton from 2000 to 2008, coached the Montreal Juniors from 2008 to 2011, when I believe then they became the Blainville Boisbriand Armada, which I then believe Joel Bouchard succeeded him after that point when they went to Blainville Boisbriand, uh, went to the Winnipeg Jets, was an assistant from 2011 to 2016, then went down, took over the Manitoba Moose. And these are his. This is his five-year run as a Moose head coach. Seventy-six games, twenty-nine and thirty-seven, ten overtime losses or ties out of the playoffs. Next year, forty-two and twenty-six, lost in round two. Uh, following year after that, thirty-nine, thirty and seven out of the playoffs. There were no this was COVID canceled season. There was no uh, postseason here for. Uh, that they were 27 and 33 and one in 61 games the following year, 2020, 2021, which I also believe there was not a postseason. Uh, 36 games, 18 wins, 13 losses, five overtime losses. That was, I believe, just the all Canadian division uh, for the AHL there. And then he was promoted to work with the Columbus Blue Jackets for the following three years, taking over as head coach and then being let go after this season. I think that if they want someone with experience, who spent time working with prospects, this is probably your best chance to, uh, this is probably your best hire because I'm looking at some of the team that he worked with in his good years uh, in Manitoba. And there's a lot of younger guys in there or prospect players in there. The AHL is always a little bit of a mix. If we're being very honest, like his last year, you know, he coached Cole Perfetti to just below a point per game, uh, David Gustafson, just below a point per game. CJ Cease was very, and current Habs defenseman Jonathan Kovacevic was on this team. There were a lot of young players on these teams that he seemed to get a decent amount out of and that I'm not opposed to this option here. Uh, Anthony Marcotte uh, expanded on this too. Also, Stéphane Julien, uh, Sylvain Favreau, 
Gilles Bouchard, Louis Robitaille, who I believe was in the running originally for the rocket job when Jean-Francois Hull was hired, Eric Veillou, Carl Mayette, and Bruce Richardson. And the last name is surprising to you. You should know that he came second behind Hull for that position a few years ago. And that's not a name I had actually heard as well that I actually want to take a look and see, hey, who is Bruce Richardson? And he played for a long time. He started his junior career in 93, 94, finished playing over in the United Kingdom in the EIHL in 2011. And he spent a lot of time recently, was a player assistant with the Fort Wayne Comets, took some time off to go back to play hockey, was a head coach at Victoriaville for two years, and then took over the Blainville, Brobby, and Armada, got them into the playoffs. He was one of the coaches that they really liked uh, as well. And then Eric Veyu is also the other name that I had that has been kind of in the back of my mind because he was a coach with, if I'm remembering correctly, the Syracuse Crunch as well. I'm just trying to load up his profile here. And yes, he was an assistant coach with Benoit Gru in Syracuse for uh, several years and then went to Quebec. He was the Remparts head coach last year. A lot of time in the QMJHL, sometime in the AHL and ECHL, all as a head coach, a guy with experience. My my big guess with this is I do not think the Canadians would have potentially parted with uh, Jean-Francois Houle so easily if there was not a ready-made player or a ready-made coach to come in. And I do think that Pascal Vincent is one of those guys. I absolutely believe that if he was not, if he was not the guy, I think that they would have, you know, maybe fought harder to keep him or to uh, maybe rework his potential contract as well. Uh, I'm looking at Gilles Bouchard as well. Uh, he played for a team called the Asbestos Aztecs, which is an incredible name on several levels, but that's not the point here. Uh, Gilles Bouchard was coached with Royal Narunda for in 2013-2014. Uh, as a head coach, won the QMJHL championship in 2015-2016, 2016-2017, all in the playoffs. Was a Syracuse Crunch coach for five years alongside Benoit Gru and then coached the Sherbrooke Phoenix last year. And I just want to double check uh, the team that he was with here because I want to say he took over the Royal Narunda team from uh, – forget his name off the top of my head, Joel Bouchard again, but regardless, there are options out there. I do think that this might actually move very quickly. My concern with Pascal Vincent is not that he doesn't have a proven AHL record. It's I look at Columbus this year, and this is a twofold coin. Columbus was a mess with injuries and a management group, which is now gone and out the door here. That did not really set him up for success, but also he did not cover himself in glory with some of the way prospects might have been treated uh, during the season. There. I look at uh, Kent Johnson, guys like Adam Fantilli, who were not getting a lot of ice time, who were getting scratched, getting sent down to the AHL. Things like that concern me because they're similar issues that I had with Jean-Francois Houle is that, hey, why is this player not playing in Olivier Gallipo? Uh, for example, is playing more than a guy like Matthias Norlinder. Now, obviously, Matthias Norlinder has not maybe hit those goals, but if they are bringing Vincent in, can you mold him into the system that you are looking for here? That's the big question. I think above anything else in the world, Pascal Vincent is going to be the next head coach of the Laval Rocket, and that is why they were able to so quickly move on this right now it's and anthony marcotte actually is answering questions on this right now about something is hey why are we holding a bad nhl situation against an ahl coach we've seen good ahl coaches be bad nhl coaches sometimes it just works out uh that way i'm curious to see what happens i think they're going to move very quickly on this to get somebody in place vincent has a lot of experience and he may also bring in somebody to work on this coaching staff. And I also do wonder, and this is a long shot. If Paul Byron now reconsiders his, I don't want to be behind the bench kind of stance here. There's a lot that could happen. It's going to be a very busy 
week for the Canadians. Ken Hughes is probably already on the phone. John Cedric actually may be on the phone. He is the GM of that team. Well, we're going to keep an eye out. And as soon as we have a new coach, you'll find out all the details here at Locked On Canadians. But we have preseason stuff to talk about too. And that's all coming up next. But first, passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And at eBay Motors, they have everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, you're not burning cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit available only to United States customers. We are back here at Locked On Canadians, and we're going to switch this a little bit here. I was kind of, I was sitting around kind of trying to figure out, hey, what are we going to talk about? And I got in late last night, admittedly, uh, which is why there was not a show out for you all this morning. That is on me. It was a late night. I kind of overcommitted at work, and I know people don't want to hear this. You want, hey, Scott, talk about hockey or nonsense or Shadow of the Earth Tree, which is loading on my Xbox over here, which is what I'm going to go do when I am done editing and posting this podcast for all of you lovely folks. But we can talk about the preseason schedule here because usually the AHL coaches are kind of involved a little bit in this with the practices getting into the preseason. And the Habs preseason starts September 23rd. That's three months from now, which is a wild thing to think about. And the best part is they're not playing 9 million games this year. They're playing six preseason games, just six. Unfortunately, four of them are against some of the worst fan bases I've ever had to deal with on Twitter, but that doesn't matter all that much right now. Let's kind of run down what the preseason looks like. They're going to open it at home against the Philadelphia Flyers and then have a back-to-back. They'll be playing against the New Jersey Devils on September 24th, have a couple of days off, and then play a home-and-home series on the 26th and 28th of September with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and then a home and away series with the Ottawa Senators ending their preseason on the road October 5th at Ottawa, which it feels like their preseason games are running very, very late into there. Uh, The Canadians are also holding two rookie games. They are not doing the rookie showcase in Buffalo this year, so I unfortunately will not be there. It is uh, usually one of my few chances to cover the team for you, but they will be doing two rookie games at the Bell Center. I assume probably Toronto and Ottawa maybe it's it's hard to say but that means and I believe training camp itself opens on September 18th so rookie camp being before that a couple of days of training two games rookie camp will disperse right into regular training camp and then a week later right into preseason games which gives us so much time to debate things which we will get plenty of this summer especially after the NHL draft happens uh, I'm kind of a fan of the shorter schedule here. Eight games was too much. And when you're playing half of them against Toronto and ha- you're still playing half of this schedule against, or a third of the schedule against Toronto and a third of it against Ottawa. But when you have like five preseason games against the Ottawa senators, it's too much. Cause then you play four regular season. It's too much exposure to the Ottawa senators here. Uh, I'm kind of grateful that, They didn't go all divisional rivals. They've started playing New Jersey more often in these as well. I believe they've played Winnipeg a few times. I might be mistaken on that. Uh, Philadelphia is a new one, though, which speaking of teams that I don't know what they're going to look like coming into this season, that's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, There's just so much that's now changing on this. It's... uh, It it feels kind of wild that it feels like the NHL season isn't even over yet. It, as of the day recording this, it is game six of the Stanley Cup final. The draft is in a week. Free agency is in uh, a few days after that. And somehow we are not done with things yet. Uh, the season should be over at this point, if we're being quite honestly at this uh, right now. Uh, 
it's kind of wild that you know i i I don't know if I'm just – I'm not trying to be a boomer and complain that, oh, wow, the season should be over. But the season should be over by now. If this series goes seven games, the winning, like, team's coaching staff and, like, staff that deserves to be celebrating at the Stanley Cup parade won't be able to because they will need to be in Vegas for the draft, which is just a wild sentence to say. So hopefully Florida wins tonight uh, when they do this because if they don't, I don't think they're going to win game seven, but that's neither here nor there. I I'm curious what this roster will look like too by this point, because we're getting in that time where teams are, we're starting to see things happen more and more and more things are starting to happen in terms of uh, trades and mo- player movement and everything else. I am very intrigued to see, Hey, who is the new face here? It was Kirby doc the year before it was Alex Newhook last year. You're going to have guys like Reinbacher. Now you're going to have Lane Hudson, uh, coming into this organization now, you're going to have a second Jack Eye, which uh, <laughs> just what the preseason needed is another Jack Eye thrown into things. There's a lot of potential in of things to really be sussed out here. I don't think this roster is going to be settled until at least that last week of games here. There's a lot of battle for competition here. There are spots up for grab. We saw last year. This is not a management group afraid to waive someone who did not perform in the preseason. Yol Armia did not play well in the preseason and was down with the rock to start the season. I don't think they're afraid of waiving a vet if they think that one, they will clear waivers and that they haven't earned a spot there among the defenders there. There's going to be a lot of guys uh, battling for spots. We know that Savard may or may not be here. If we're penciling him in, you have Matheson, you have Savard, you have Gooley, you have Kovacevic, you have Hudson, you have Jack Eye, you have, you have, you have. There's not a lot of spots, but guys are going to battle for every inch there. I'm really, really intrigued to see what this team, the composition of this team looks like three months from now, because it's going to be totally different than it is now. Uh, I apologize too. This is going to be a little bit shorter episode. Like I said, I wanted to get that coaching stuff out there. As things happen, if there are trades this weekend, I will try to get an emergency show out for anybody. If anything happens, obviously stick with us here at Locked On Canadians, your number one daily Montreal Canadiens. Kind of taken aback by all of this without any heads up and warning. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians, LockedOnCanadians at gmail.com. You can follow me at Scott Matlow. We'll be back to regularly scheduled program next week. We're looking at trying to lock down a guest for the draft week, getting a big two-part draft episode out there. We are doing a live show after the second day of the draft because we want to hang out with y'all and just hang out and chill and talk about the draft. Laura will have live reactions on Friday night when she is back. Until then, thank you all so much for tuning in, and we will see you all next time.